Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul... So, I, and I encourage people, if you have a question, email it to me, or you can really do the Pearl Harbor uh, surprise sneak attack and ask the question here on Shabbat, and I uh, will do my best to answer. If not, I'll take it home, do my homework, and come back and answer it the next week. But I, Toshio and Kamiko emailed me this week, with a question, and that question is in <clears throat> uh, first, uh, first Timothy 2, verse 15. And to be honest with you, this pertains to women, and because I'm not a woman, I haven't really thought too much about this one. <laughs> but I think it, it, it caused me to look, and, and, and I was really excited when I... Because I think it's a, a wonderful thing if we understand what Paul is really saying here. Let me read this. First of all, we'll read the verse in 1 Timothy, not 2 Timothy, let's get 1 Timothy 2.15. Nevertheless, she, a woman, will be saved in, now I'm reading in the New King James, saved in childbirth. Some translations say, say saved through childbirth, which changes the meaning of it entirely. We'll talk about that in a minute. Saved in childbirth, or saved through childbirth. Two different meanings, but we'll talk about it. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbirth, bearing in childbearing, if they continue in faith and holiness with self-control. To understand this, we need to go up to verse 8 to read this in its context. It's always important to read things in their context. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. Uh, Timothy was a leader over churches, an evangelist, and he became a, a leader, an elder. He says, I desire therefore, verse 8, I desire that the men pray everywhere, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with propriety and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing, but which is proper for women, professing godliness with good works. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was, in for was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, nevertheless, she shall be, she will be saved in childbirth, bearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness. Now, I am not going to go into a long teaching. I think my wife will have something. I'd like her to say something about the first part. I'm not going to get into that. I will just, but I want her to have something to say here in a minute, because we were talking about it on the way in in the in the car, and I'd like her to talk to the women about this, but. Uh, basically, this is not a, a chauvinistic, uh, ma uh, misogynistic statement on the part of Paul against women at all. Um, he's speaking about, we have to, he was dealing with cultural situations in, in, uh, there in the, uh, the Greco-Roman world and where, where um, evidently there were women that were out of place in and usurping authority, or maybe they were dressing in a in a way, or or adorning themselves in a non-modest kind of a way, and so he and maybe they were trying to usurp authority and talk too much, and and, and this happens, okay, and so he's addressing this, and and I'm I'm not going to get into all that. Uh, some some denominations have taken this, and they they have gone to the other extreme and say the women cannot wear any jewelry, women cannot wear any colorful clothing, they have to dress, you know, they cannot do their hair, they cannot put anything, any makeup on their on their faces, and they've got to look, what was your term, they've got to look dowdy, dowdy. they have to, they look gray, they look um, drab, frumpy. frumpy, and you have denominations, they can only dress in black and white or whatever. They have to look Amish. There, yeah, well, there you go. Or, or Mennonite. 
that would be one extreme. And then and, and, and some of the holiness, the Pentecostal holiness people back years ago took this and, and, and they went to the extreme in this country. I don't know what they did in Russia, but maybe. But it's like you couldn't dance, you couldn't sing, you couldn't this, you couldn't that. And they go, they just like went, they took this out of context, out of the cultural context. And this is not the Hebraic way at all. The Hebraic way is dance and sing and shout. And even the bride of Yeshua, the bride of Yehovah in Ezekiel, she is adorned with beauty and, and beautiful robes and even jewelry. And then some people go to the other extreme and, and, and they just go, they go, well, that doesn't apply to us. That was them. And, and, and you got people on Christian television that quite some of these women look like prostitutes and whores. <laughs> They've got big wigs and they got makeup that's, about this thick and eyelashes. You know who I'm talking about. They're, they're dead now, so we can't. But I mean, I'm thinking of two in particular. They're both dead. But but I mean, it's like that is the there's there's a balance in there. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll let Sandy talk in a minute. But what what he is saying is, and I'm just going to read from my my notes here. First of all, let's, let's look at the words here. The word saved, she shall be saved in childbirth. The word saved there is the Greek word sozo. Sozo. It's the basic word meaning to be saved, as in, you know, salvation. But the word sozo doesn't mean just spiritual salvation, but it means to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger, to save from suffering or perishing. I think you're getting an idea of what Paul's really saying here. When you understand what saved means, in the Christian church, we have narrowed the meaning of saved down. If you look to just mean your soul is being saved, that's, if you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew verb yasha, where we get the word yeshua, it means to save or to deliver or to rescue from your enemies, from a drought, from disease, from the, from the devil, from death. It can mean a lot of different things how it's used in the Tanakh. And Yeshua, Yehoshua. Yeshua is a shortened form of Yehoshua. Yehoshua means Yehovah, Yudhe saves. Yeshua means he saves or salvation. I, I'm actually, I think it means... It means salvation. I, I believe so. Anyway, um, uh, and that's what he is. He is, yes, it means salvation. Many times in the, in the Tanakh, in the Psalms, it'll talk about salvation. You know, Elohim is my salvation. And if you look at the Hebrew, it'll be Yeshua. That's the word. You read the Hebrew and it's... It, that's how. That's what it says. Many, many times. I love it. I've, I've actually written that many times. This, these were prophecies pointing forward to Yeshua. So, anyway, so this is what the Greek word sozo means. It's a verb. Uh, uh, yeah, it's to save, and it's it's analogous to the Hebrew word yasha. Um, the word in shall be saved in or through. This is this is really important. Is the Greek word. Um, dia, spelled D-I-A, uh, and which can have several meanings. In the Greek genitive case, okay, the genitive case, in Koine Greek, the biblical Greek, um, there are four cases, Nom nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative. Um, nominative case is, is, is the noun form. Okay, the subject of a, of a, we're getting to grammar here. The, the, um, the genitive case, uh, uh, is the possessive form. The dative case uh, is the, is the, um, object. It's, it's the, it's the direct object and the accusative is the direct, indirect object. I'm not going to get into the grammar of it all, but, in this case, this is in the genitive form, and it's not the accusative form. What that what that means is, it's not. Salvation is not a result of going through childbirth. You're not saved by going through childbirth. 
If your Bible saved, she if your Bible say that she is saved, saved through childbirth, they translate the word dia as through, then people can be misled to believe that, oh, childbirth brings her to salvation in Yeshua. Which implies, and this is David Stern in his Jewish New Testament commentary really brings this out very well. It implies that there's an alternate way to salvation other than faith in Yeshua. And we know that that's not true. There's only one path of salvation, and that's Yeshua the Messiah. And, but this is not in the accusative um, uh, form. It's in the genitive, which means she is saved... Um, well, in this case, she is saved from childbirth. Um, the uh, let me look at my notes here. I want to make sure I get this right. She is saved um, in the course of, or during, or throughout. In other words, she's delivered. She is uh, kept safe through childbirth. Why? If you go back, Paul has in mind, in view here, Genesis 3.16, where, because Eve was the one that initially listened to the serpent and brought sin into the world, and then Adam also, he listened to her and fell into it. And Paul is saying that earlier, in a few verses earlier, and Elohim put a curse on her. Be and he's, one of the curses was, you're going to have a hard time in childbirth. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. And what he is saying here is, if you are a godly, modest woman, a saintly woman, and he gives some examples up above how to conduct yourself properly, don't usurp authority. Remember he said in Genesis 3, 16, that you will want to exercise authority over the man. This is your curse. This is something you will struggle with. You want to be the head. You don't really want to be the head, but you want to always be opposing your husband. You want to take authority over him. You want to be criticizing him. You want to be tearing him down. Whatever, you know, there's many manifestations. And this is something you will have to fight. Men have their own struggles. And they got the, their curses too for them. He says, but if you maintain yourself in the congregation... You don't draw attention to yourself with all of these, you know, immodest clothing and, you know, Boku jewelry and all of this stuff. I mean, obviously my wife buys jewelry. I bought all this jewelry for her. But it's not big stuff. It's all modest. I, I love good jewelry and I bless her with it. And my, my dad did that for my mom and that's where I got it from. But, um, but she, she doesn't have, you know, eyelashes and bright red lipstick and makeup that's she, it's all very tasteful it's all very beautiful and and all of you women is the same way you don't look like whores and prostitutes or or or, or like a movie actress or or whatever miss america i don't know what now they're not whatever anyway so but what paul is saying is if, if you women will will conduct yourself properly godly in a saintly manner you through Yeshua, the curse is reversed. And yes, you have to go through childbirth and it's tough, but it's not going to be as bad because you're in Yeshua and I will save and deliver you from the, the ultimate, you know, from all of the, the curses and, and these troubles. Look how many women have died in childbirth. My grandmother, my father's mother, died in childbirth. Not with my father, but with, with her with his sister, they both died. This is back in the 1930s. I mean, it's happened all the time. And, and so I believe this is a promise, and this is actually not a curse against women. This is, Paul is lifting women up and saying, this is how you can mitigate the curse through Yeshua and by properly conducting yourselves, and you will be blessed in childbirth by not experiencing the full pain and grief and struggle of childbirth. And I think also, I think, can could we, could we like say that 
Not only that, and this is kind of my take on it, but you'll be saved and from in motherhood. Because not only will you be saved giving, but you, if you're a godly woman, you're going to raise up godly children who will, if you're a godly mother and a godly wife, you are going to have godly children and your children will not bring you grief because you taught them righteously. And yes, some of our children grow astray and they got to spend time being a prodigal and they got to spend time in the pig pen like prodigal son. And like one mother who is struggling with her kids, my children are out in the world. They're working on their testimony. <laughs> yeah, yeah is raising up a testimony, and he's going to bring them back with a testimony. Hallelujah. Okay, but it's going to be less painful on the mother when she raises her children properly, and they come back, or they continue in the faith. Like this young man here, he's, you know, he's been walking with Yehovah. He, he's not biologically my son, but he's like a son. He's just like a son to me since he's been three, Caleb. And, 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 um, and, and I, I see him, just the Yah doing mighty things in his life. I'm so proud of him. And, and um, this is something, you know, that, that would be a crowning achievement on the heads, uh, like a crown on a mother's head. So I hope that blessed you. Tandy, do you want to say something more about uh, about the, the first part? Well, we were discussing. Um, Why don't you aim it over? To, uh, yeah, move the camera over to her. <laughs> she doesn't like to be on camera, but I, let's, my wife doesn't get on YouTube very often, and I, I want to honor her. Yeah, just go ahead and run that. That way I can't watch myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. Um, but what we're talking about in the car on the way here is what does that mean about not having, you know, your hair done up in the... the Gold jewelry? woven in it. <laughs> Truly. And I believe what he's talking about is for the women to come in and be modest in a way so that they are not trying to create themselves to be flirtatious, sexually attractive to the point of distraction. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, we see women doing that. I don't really need to probably call them out, but um, we see, you know, they'll be out in front of the, for instance, the choir wears choir robes so that they're modest, right? They're not distracting. But we see a lot in the Pentecostal world where the women are up there just praising, yeah, but their shirts and cleavage are showing. And they're, I've seen where they raise their hands and their midriff is showing. and. That's distracting. That's not what we're called to do. We're called, we can look attractive. We're just not to look sexually flirtatious. Sensual. The, exactly. So we just had a little discussion here in the, in the, in the fellowship uh, about some additional meanings of Genesis, uh, First Timothy 2.15. And um, as we were discussing, discussing we also... It came out that as, a, as the woman was the agent, if you will, through which sin came into the world, she listened to the serpent at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then she, she then enticed the man. Of course, it was his responsibility. He should have exercised his priesthood and his leadership uh, to say no, Elohim has told us not to do this, but he acquiesced and fell. And so the woman then, and so as a result of the fall, human beings were cut off from a relationship with Elohim because of this. Now the woman in childbirth has the, uh, the incredible opportunity Oh man, this 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 will preach. Has the incredible opportunity to bring children into the world if she's a godly and a saintly woman to raise up children that will resist the world, the flesh, and the devil, and will become godly children for Elohim and reverse the fall. By helping bring them into relationship with Yeshua. Remember the hand that rocks the cradle rocks the nation. It is a mother that teaches while the father's off earning a living. 
doing what he has to. She's the one there that's nurturing them, that's teaching them, that's training them in the ways of Yeshua. And she has the chance to advance the kingdom at the devil's expense by raising up godly children. Is it any wonder that the devil is so against marriage, so against the family, is so against one man, one woman defining marriage, is so intent on destroying babies in the mother's womb through abortion to prevent this from happening. Why pedophilia? Why a child sacrifice? Why, while, you know, the offering of a children to Moloch and to, uh, to, to Baal, which happened then and is happening now through satanic rituals, through pedophilia, through pornography, the destruction of children, through brainwashing them with humanistic, evolutionary, um, uh, leftist, socialistic, um, um, anti-Christ spirit type things that we get bombarded at them from the, um, the media entertainment, social media, our educational system, both at the lower levels and at the higher levels, the university level. Mm -hmm. It's an all-out war against the family, against the, the parents. Transgenderism, the rise in the homosexual movement where they won't even have children. Or if they do get children into that, they are totally programmed away from the family. I mean, you can see the, uh, the ramifications of destroying, you know, women's lib, getting women out of the home into the corporate world, where the, now motherhood and, and being a wife is now denigrated. The biblical role of a woman, which is a lofty, high, exalted, being a mother, there's nothing greater than that. Being a wife, being working together with a husband, raising up a godly family. There is, the Bible extols and exalts this position because that is, goes back to what Elohim said, be fruitful and multiply, and a husband and a wife and children. And it's a picture of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Ruach, which is the feminine side of Elohim. I don't know why people call it a he. It's, I guess, force of habit. That's a picture of the Godhead. The Ruach is the one that teaches us. It, the Ruach, the Comforter, comes and teaches us all things, as Yeshua said. Reveals the truth of Elohim. Convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. This is what a mother does. Then the book of Proverbs it speaks about the Torah of your mother. This is the woman's job. I mean, the man, too, they work together, but she's the one that's there all the time. So you can see why the enemy would so attack that, because she has the chance to reverse the curse more than anybody Hallelujah. and to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, yes, I see what Paul is saying here. It is really um, illuminating when you stop to think about it. This is one little verse. I mean, I learned a lot today. Listen diligently to me. Beneath what is